Welcome everyone, I'm Lou and this is Deciphered, the podcast where we take cryptic topics and break them down to ease their complexity. I'd like to first start off with a uh, quote from Socrates, the Greek philosopher, beauty is short-lived tyranny. What do you think he meant by that? Beauty and tyranny shouldn't be in the same sentence, let alone in the same thought. In case you're wondering um, what this uh, topic of discussion is going to be about, well, if you guess tyrants, or tyranny, or dictatorship, uh, you're right on the money. I don't know if any of you uh, remember or even saw this uh, short-lived television series called Tyrant, uh, which mirrored the events of the Arab Spring. It brought uh, an American family, a rich American family, <clears throat> into a world of corruption and deceit and a uh, Middle Eastern uh, dictatorship, you could say. Now, while we associate tyranny as evil, uh, the uh, definition is a little more broader, in a sense. Here, I'll uh, enlighten you what the uh, definition means. A tyrant, Greek for tyrannos, in the modern English usage of the word, is an absolute ruler unrestrained by law or person, or one who has usurped, which means pretty much um, taken over by force, legitimate sovereignty. Often described as a cruel character, a tyrant defends their position by oppressive means, tending to control almost everything in the state. Now, the original Greek term, however, merely meant a authoritarian sovereign without reference to character. Now that paints this in a uh, a different view. What did you say? Your whole life you have watched, you know, uh, television news reports about the Arab Spring, or um, uh, you might have heard of it, pretty much anything that has to do with a revolution outside of the United States. Well, actually, I mean, we have a good example. Uh, We had a revolution here, the American Revolution, where we kicked out the oppressive um, king and queen authority of uh, the United States and replaced it with our own um, government. In our case, it worked, for better or worse, and now today we are the United States, officially. Other places still uh, held on to their um, monarchy, still have kings and queens, um, dictators, but as time goes on, as people, you know, think for their, for themselves, they, um, you know, it just spells disaster for the ones in charge. You know, you have things like an- anarchy happen, uh, chaos, and then, you know, revolution. People want change, people want freedom, and... Sometimes there is a clash of ideals, which is what brings brings this on. Throughout modern time, um, uh, uh, revolutions were always, um, you know, portrayed as the uh, lonely, starving rebels fighting off the oppressive tyrants of the ruling country. Sometimes they'd be successful. Sometimes, uh, not so much. Or they find common ground and split a country in half. As I mentioned before, the Arab Spring, this was, uh, I think, a great um, showcase of this. Where you had the people tired of being under someone's thumb who's been in charge forever and sticking with the same rules. And it just gets old. So what do you do? You risk your life by revolting and um, trying to change for the better. In some cases, this worked. Uh, Libya had a successful revolution, in theory, by removing its oppressive uh, ruler. However, um, there wasn't a uh, structure put in place, and today, things are a little chaotic. The country doesn't have a stable government, and uh, things are falling apart. Now... um, Throughout North Africa and the Middle East, um, you, for example, you had um, Tunisia, which their um, revolution was successful. Um, Egypt is another... Um, well, Egypt was flip-floppy. 
you had a successful revolution, and the military got involved, they were a part of it actually, they didn't like who was, um, you know, officially elected, so they intervened again, and, you know, it's kind of a mess, but stable at the same time. It's, um, those politics regarding uh, North Africa and the Middle East are um, of complex, and uh, I don't even think um, I could touch that. I mean, you would need, like, a degree in um, politics or um, something of that nature and the gift of the silver tongue to settle all those disputes. Um, in modern sense, uh, like I said, uh, tyranny or tyrants in general or, you know, portrayed as these uh, warmongers, um, just, you know, oppressive as oppressive gets. Further examples, uh, obviously uh, Saddam Hussein, his regime, uh, the regime of um, the Syrian president, Bashar al-Assad, and to an extent, you know, the uh, Iranian leadership, and, um, well, if you're on the other side of the uh, boat, I guess America might come off as oppressive. I mean, um, you know, doesn't take a genius to you know, flip on CNN or the news and seeing some kind of um, minority, you know, um, just not being dealt the right cards in this day and age in free America. But that's um, another time, another place for that topic. Just for the record, uh, I'm not defending or, you know, um, showcasing tyranny, aside from just talking about it and um, trying to... Um, you know, find the true meaning, and it's an uh, archaic meaning, actually, which is uh, quite different than what we think it is. I mean, I think um, one can truly call someone a tyrant if you gas your own people. There's no um, pure and clear example than, you know, the destruction and suppression of um, different groups and uh, people with their own opinion trying to get a word in. That, I believe, is uh, true tyranny right there. However, now, in the classical periods, archaic time, um, Greece is a good example to uh, uh, switch gears for you. The, um, I don't want to say positive view of tyranny, but a, a different meaning and uh, state of mind. In the... Uh, you know, uh, larger Greek world, before Rome was the uh, big bosses of the ancient world, you had Greece, which, um, uh, you know, if you know anything about Alexander the, uh, Alexander the Great, you, you know, you know how they stretched and conquered um, most of the known world, aside from the Persians. The Greeks were very um, spread out, a um, lot towards the east, what is today's uh, Turkey, in parts of the Middle East, and um, southern Italy and Sicily, actually. Uh, this is where uh, the other form of tyranny uh, takes shape. You see, uh, these um, specific areas of Italy and Sicily were called Magna Graecia, which means Greater uh, Greece, because of the high level of uh, Greek Im immigrants floating to uh, these regions of Italy. Now, these leaders of these city-states were called tyrants. Were they mean? Were they cruel? Heavy-handed? Well, um, yeah. You know, if you uh, look at them, sure, they had, you know, rules, just like every other leader. However, they weren't regarded to today's, you know, mass murderer dictators. Now, these guys were politicians. Uh, they were opportunists, leaders wanted nothing more than to see their uh, city thrive. Now, obviously, like I said, you know, um, they all had rules. And if you broke them rules, you know, things would uh, turn out well for you, you know. But where this separates from the modern vision of tyranny is they were, like I said, more like leaders. The Greek tyrants of Sicily were in their own right presidents, generals, and, um, like I said, leaders. Was there uh, oppressive means 
to uh, gain victories or, you know, uh, for the people to better understand, you know, who uh, wore the pants. Yeah, but, you know, uh, you see the same thing today, you know, to a more or less um, extent. But with that, you have uh, free will, you know. Some people won't always agree with you. Some people will take tyrant and turn it on its head and make it a bad thing. And um, that's obviously, you know, it usually goes in that direction in a way. You can't help it. It's going to go that way if you, um, you know, keep the ruling thumb under the people in a negative light. While the tyrants of the uh, ancient period weren't as cruel as, say, the, uh, you know, military dictators of today, uh, you know, they were they were pretty rough. Um, they had their own means of, uh, you know, laying down the law and such. And by the time uh, Rome, you know, came around, well, you know, that starts to uh, paint a picture of uh, what's to come, pretty much. Especially when you have opposition against, you know, the local tyrant or leader or whatever form of government that's currently in charge. You're going to have people that don't like that, that think they're being oppressed or suppressed or, you know, just want a different way of life, more options. The longer one stays in power, um, I believe uh, you will lose grip of uh, the point you were trying to get across. And in the end, it will uh, definitely take a turn for worse. Sometimes you just have to pass the torch on um, to someone greater. Hopefully will, you know, envision how you thought things to be just in a greater light. Deep down inside, though, I think there's a little of a tyrant in all of us. I don't mean that necessarily in a bad way. Like I said, the Greek term for tyrant meant, you know, a little different than the... Um, you know, dictator, tyrant type of uh, today. If any of us were uh, given the opportunity to lead, we would do our best. We would uh, try to be fair, uh, try to be reasonable, and, um, you know, uh, take command where need be. But out of the 50 people that do listen to you, there's another 50 that, you know, thinks you're crazy. And once I... Once again, conflict arises, and you have to know how to deal with that. So, tyrants, are they misunderstood creatures, or creatures of habit? Here's another little quote from uh, Niccolò Machiavelli, Italian philosopher, among other things. He who wishes to be obeyed must know how to command. Short but strong quote. And what I think he was um, trying to um, get across there was, uh, well, it's just not e easy uh, leading. It's just not that easy leading. Because you could come in with the best of intentions, you know, leading uh, a city, state, or government. But you could be um, casted down as some oppressive tyrant because you're misunderstood. Or, like I said, you know, the opposition... Um, just doesn't like what you're trying to uh, convey to the people. And with that said, I'm going to bring in another quote from uh, an American founding father and the third president of the United States, Thomas Jefferson. Enlighten the people generally, and tyranny and oppression of the body and mind will vanish like evil spirits at the dawn of day. Now that particular quote, I think um, Jefferson was trying to say pretty much um, treat the people like you would treat your family, with care, dignity, and respect. Spread the words of love and prosperity to the people, and not toxic ideology. If we could change ourselves for the better, tyranny itself will be a fragment of our past. And with that, you'll thrive. Thank you all for listening. Until next time, Take care.